Good afternoon, it's another tutorial today and I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool snowflake effect in Illustrator CC. It's a monoline one which I did and I'm going to show you how to create this, really cool. You can see you can lay it out on a photograph or use color with it, um, super useful, super handy. So let's get stuck into it. First up what I did, I got a photo from Google. As you can see here, I just copy and pasted it. Um, you can see it's got a watermark there. Obviously, I didn't own the photo. Uh, but yeah, if you go on Google, type snowflake photograph or photography, you'll see heaps of different ones. And, you know, there's so many different styles where you can select it and, you know, create the one that you like or the style that you like. It's so intricate and beautiful. Um, you know, God's creation is awesome. And it's just so, there's so much details and design in every little aspect, even if it's like microscopic or really small. But I think it's so awesome to see, um, see snowflakes. So, and it's Christmas time, so let's jump into it. So just copy and paste the photograph that you want into Illustrator. I just copy and pasted it. And what I did, I went to the top bar and dropped the opacity down to 50%, just so it makes a little bit more opaque so I can sketch over it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get press P for the pen tool. I'm going to find the center point roughly of the um, photograph. I'm gonna left click once, and then I'm gonna left click again. And this should make a path or a line. I'm just gonna make a color. And I'm just gonna locate, drag it across so it's roughly in the middle. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm going to go up the top here, go view, and you can go to guides. And then what you can say is make guides, which is control five or command five. This will turn this into an actual guide. So now we can use that. So what I'm gonna do is start to just create one piece of the snowflake, one one little extension of it, and I'm gonna duplicate it all the way around so we can save time. So I'm gonna press P for the pen tool, find the center point roughly here, left click, and then you can hold shift if you wanna have it on a like 90 degree angle, or you can just follow the photo photograph to make it a lot easier. So I'm gonna zoom in, I'm zooming in with holding alt and the mouse wheel. I will left click up the top of the actual end of that snowflake part, and I'm gonna make this black and I'm gonna go to the top left and just put the stroke up put it on six points which is pretty cool and what I'm gonna do now is start to draw out these um, little parts of the snowflake crystal so I'll press P for the pen tool I'll start from the top and what I'll actually do is start to just follow along you can hold shift as well if you want to keep it on an angle like this and you can roughly do it that way if you want to make it more like geometric but what we can do is just press P and then left click and left click so I left click I'll put my mouse on the path left click once and then wherever whatever angle the snowflake is shooting I'm just gonna left click again like that we can always adjust it as well and I'm just following the line I'm trying to think in a simple mono line shape and obviously some images might not be high res so you might get a little bit pixelation but we just want to follow the shape that's all we really want from this snowflake is to use it as a reference point a guide for us to use and you can see some parts are thick if you want to do shapes you can do it this way but today we're just doing a monolight effect And it doesn't have to be exactly on the um, on the like image. Just make sure you're connecting the paths and you're clicking on the path. I'm left clicking, left click, left click, left click. I can bring this up. Left click, left click. And once again, I'm not worrying too much about the angles. I'm just trying to follow the photograph just to show like what you can make. You can always just adjust it if it looks a bit weird. Got another big one down here. And if you do feel like it's it's a bit bland, you can, you know, add some little extra parts. So like I missed a few points here. But I'm just going along with the pen tool and just adding parts to make it more interest. Even on the top here, what I can do is sort of Make it like interesting. Okay. 
and I can join these two paths. So if I select this and press Control J, it should connect these two paths like that. It's a bit too far out, just so it's a bit more unique and interesting. I'm just adjusting it as I go here. Yeah, cool. I can I can connect that. Delete that. Join those two, and I'll bring it down to the line there. Cool. Yeah, so that's sweet. And then the, I'll do the same for the other side. For this side, I can hold shift because it's sort of on on a ninety degree angle. This the photo so you can see here I can just hold shift and that will keep it on a straight line which makes it a lot easier for this other little section and then for the those extra parts I could just do it at a down angle I can even hold shift so you can see it snaps to 45 degrees And you can make like really intricate designs if you put more more time into it. But yeah, it's just up to you. Like, what's you know, what are you trying to do? Is it for just for an icon for fun, or is it for a client, or you know, are you doing like a promotional material for Christmas? It's good to yeah play around and see what you can create. I'm just editing going back and forth and then there's this one bit here might add a bit more details try and add as many like lines that go diagonal it just makes it look a bit more playful like there's so many different types of snowflakes as well cool so that's looking yeah it's looking good it's looking good so what I'm going to do now is select all these lines and strokes, right? I'm going to go press Control G. You can also go to the object and select group because you want to group it all together. So things don't get misplaced. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my polygon tool. So I'll go to the left hand side, right click on the shape tool, which will look like a rectangle. And you want to select polygon tool. And what I'm going to do, it should have, you know, the five sides. I'm going to click and drag and hold shift drag it all the way out so we get this shape and I'll press Control C Control F duplicate bring it down so we can create an interesting pattern I'll also go for a circle there as you can see there's like this little circle thing there which looks interesting so I can do it like this and what I'm going to do now is select this group right I'm going to press R for the rotate tool so once you do that, I want to find the center point of the polygon or the, of this grid here. I'm going to hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. And you'll see you'll get a box pop up. Now what we want to do, we want to make sure that it's the right angle and it should be a denomination of 360. So you can see 60 is going to be the right one because you'll see it has um, six sides. So I'm going to put it on 60. I'm going to press Copy. As soon as you press copy, all you have to do is press Control D or Command D and it should automatically duplicate the same action and duplicate the same shape. And as you can see, we have this very intricate shape. If you don't like how it's looking, what you can do is you can Control Z, edit it and then just redo it. And you can always, you know, make a copy of it as well. So I'll, I'll just make a copy of that there. And maybe I want to edit this because this look is looking a bit weird to me. So what I'll do, I can go back and you know add some strokes here. Cool. 
and you know I can make it look whatever I want to do with it I can customize it maybe I want like an arrow tip or whatever or whatever I want then I can go back here and go to the right angle. I'm using my mouse wheel as well to select the angle. Press copy, control D, control D, control D. And you can see, if I turn my guides off, we have this really cool shape. And I can always come in here and customize these parts. So maybe I just want to add a bit more pattern. So I'll duplicate this polygon shape by pressing control C. And to paste it on front, what you do is you press control F and it will make a duplicate. And I'm just gonna, you know, duplicate this bit. I could probably get rid of the circle as well. And maybe I just want to do another polygon shape, bring it in and make it, try and make the spacing like consistent. That's looking really cool. Kind of happy with this. So I'm going to select it all, press control G. I'm going to bring it down as well. And now we can see we got this cool little pattern. You can see here the stroke it looks a bit funny. So I could go here and edit this, fix it up a bit. So I'll bring these stroke in. Um, as you can see here, it's a bit extending too far out. And obviously I could have done this before when I did the rotate, but you know, it's just gonna, I'm just gonna quickly do it now. Cause you can always edit, go back and edit it. And look, that just didn't take me too long to do that. It's just because my, I, I notice a lot of uh, things. I'm always having eye for detail if I see like, especially if it's like a monoline thing, you can tell if it's like things are out of place or whatever. So cool, that's looking sweet. I can, yeah, it's group it all together. I can just make a duplicate of it. And then what I can do, because it's all one stroke, it's all monoline, I'm, I can actually change the color of it. Another interesting thing is I don't like the, I, I like rounding off the ends of the caps of the strokes. So to do that, I'll go to my stroke panel. You can also open it by going to window, clicking stroke. I'm going to click the cap and click on the round one. And now if you notice, it's actually rounded off. So you can see that straight cut, this is round. I can also click the corners, round the corners, but I don't think there's any corners in this because it's all just flat strokes. Sweet, and that's looking heaps awesome. Then what you can do, you could go to Unsplash and get a photo. Um, I have like heaps of different like types of photos. So it's like maybe I want like mountains and forests or um, I can go, I can go to Unsplash, type in winter. And like there's heaps of like nice photos here. I keep in this one. You can download that, download it for free. I'll drag it and drop it into Illustrator just like that. And what I can do is press M for the rectangle tool, drag a box over the photograph, make it, you know, I can keep it blue if I want. And what I can do is go to my transparency panel. And what I can do is go to multiply or, you know, play around with different ones. Overlay is all right. Hard light is typically good too. I'm just gonna stick with multiply, drop the opacity a little bit. Like this, I can then select it, the snowflake. I'll just duplicate it by holding alt as I drag it. I'll make sure these are behind. So I'll select the, the um, photograph and the color. I'll go to object, arrange, bring center back. So this will send it behind everything. I'll select this and I'll make it white. So now you can see we've got this really cool intricate snowflake that you can chuck on a photograph. You know, you can play around with different colors. Maybe I want to, you know, have it on a color like this. I can play around with other colors as well. See what it looks like. And because it's a stroke, make sure you apply the color to the stroke, not the fill. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if it was helpful or useful and I love getting suggestions. Also remember to subscribe and leave a comment below if you enjoyed the tutorial. Really appreciate it. Hope you have an awesome Christmas if I don't um, make another video, but um, yeah.